i raised to highlight some important issues through you to the honorable minister sir sir uh, the current population in india is 145 crore estimated to be 145 crores and it will raise up to 166 estimated to go up to 166 crores by 2050 sir uh, 43% of our children are undernourished this is very alarming sir sir the next is india ranked 111th out of 125 countries uh, in 2023 global hunger index and this is also very alarming sir this global global hunger index is calculated based on the undernourishment child stunting and child mortality and i request the honorable minister and this uh, to find out the causative forces what exactly the reason and why the why the population is going up how to control the population if the population continue to go up in the same manner as it is going now and by 2050 what will be the food shortage what will be the food scarcity and the way the urbanization is going on and the way the agricultural lands are being converted it for non agricultural use and if the same trend continues what will be the fate of the mankind in the world sir particularly in india so therefore i appeal to the honorable minister to take appropriate remedial measures to ensure that there'll be adequate food for, food for all the all the indian citizens uh, by, even including uh, by the including for the population uh, which is expected to go up to by 2050 sir the second important issue sir which i would like to bring to the notice of the honorable minister through you is increasing post harvest losses sir sir in 2022 india has lost 15% of its fruit 12% of the vegetables and 6% of the cereals post harvest sir the reason why the, the reason is lack of infrastructure lack of go downs lack of cold storage facilities and lack of marketing adequate marketing arrangements sir in andhra pradesh the in last december crops sown in 10 lakh acres across the state was damaged by cyclone manchung sir in our country even when there is a bumper harvest when even the years when when the bumper harvest uh, uh, comes it causes loss to the farmers because we do not have adequate storage facilities as i have al I already told you and there are no adequate processing facilities processing capacities to preserve the harvested uh, uh, har harvest sir these these are all the force these are all the these are all forced to throw the harvest out sir last year in september farmers in karnool andhra pradesh were forced to dump tomatoes uh, on the road because it it did not command adequate prices also it cannot it could not cover even the transportation costs sir i therefore appeal to the government and the honorable minister to optimize the supply chain what is important is honorable minister sir honorable minister sir kindly listen so i request the honorable minister to kindly optimize the supply chain and ensure that losses are prevented and they are below the acceptable mark of 2% sir sir the next issue which i would like to bring to the notice of the minister through you sir ending the production ending the production and consumption of gmos genetically modified i ask the minister to reduce the dependence on gmo and increase the production organically developed seeds which is better for the health all our health sir sir uh, gmo legally approved for import into india include soybean canola and corn and our own varieties of hy hybrid bt cotton bt brinjal have been commercialized already and mustard is also on the way sir so i urge the government and i urge the minister uh, the side effects to take cognizance of the side effects of consuming of course i mean it will increase the production will go up food security will go up on at the same time 
the side effects of this consuming GMOs also should be taken into consideration because some people say that they result in cancer and other allergies and other long ailments, sir. So I appreciate the initiative of the government to focus on the development of agricultural research, sir. And the last point which I would like to bring to the notice of the Honorable Minister is the budget for the Department of Agricultural Research, which is very, very important, and research education on research. There has been raised very, very marginally to 9,941 crores from 9,877 crores. And I request the Honorable Minister to increase the budget allocation for the research and, edu and education on agriculture. Sir, thank, thank you, you very Reddy. much. Thank you, Vice Chairman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Um, sir, uh, initially I would like to congratulate Srimadhi Nirmala Sita Ramanji for having uh, presented her seventh consecutive budget in the house and also I would like to congratulate Sri Nadaji who has very uh, ingenuously uh, made the allocations for the various departments in his own ministry keeping in mind the challenges that the country is facing today pertaining to the health sector. Sir, even as India is making great strides in terms of GDP where the world GDP is about 3% and uh, the GDP of India is estimated to be anywhere between 7.2 to 8 percent. Uh, India is in a state of uh, economical and uh, demographical transition today. And keeping this in mind, I think uh, the, uh, when it comes to the health sector, there is a lot more space for us to actually maneuver and to, uh, and to move around. So, the, uh, to achieve the, uh, the, the set targets in, in our country when it comes to health, I think uh, the infrastructure in our country also needs to ramp itself up. And the health infrastructure has been stretched and it needs to be strengthened further. Having said that, sir, the, against this background, uh, the very thought to establish wellness centers, because uh, if we have to uh, take into consideration the, uh, the health concerns of the country at the tertiary level, I think our roots will also have to be very strong. And uh, going by what is said earlier by our ancestors that prevention is better than cure, uh, the setting up of wellness centers at the ground level I think is a very welcome measure wherein the primary health screening is done and then probably uh, if, if so required they would be uh, sent to uh, for tertiary care to district and other higher hospitals. Um, sir, even as I appreciate and welcome the setting up of the, um, the wellness centers, which are the Arogya Kendras at, at, at the grassroots level, I think we would also have to introspect on the condition and situation of our CHCs and PHCs. So today they are, a star, they are literally starved of infrastructure at the CHCs and PHCs where we do not have the required number of doctors in place or paramedics in place. And I'm sure all of us have been seeing uh, t time and again um, in media where even power or electricity has been cut to these CHCs and PHCs and in the light of the torches uh, there have been surgeries that have been done too. So I think that we need to kind of work with the state governments as well to ensure that these uh, the infrastructure at the CHCs and PHCs are strengthened. I have been listening with rapt attention to my f colleagues on the other side of the benches who have repetitively been speaking about the 2.5% of the GDP that needs to be allocated for health and uh, the central government not doing enough when it comes to allocation. So may I remind them that the 2.5% of the GDP that needs to be allocated for health is not necessarily the central government alone but the states would also have to be proactive and for coming to uh, put in their allocations and we see largely that the states are not so forthcoming when it comes to their priorities when it uh, uh, when it comes to the the health sir and uh, sir uh, I have also been listening to my friends on the other side when they are repetitively talking about out-of-pocket expenditure which is large in our country but we also have to appreciate sir the work done by the the interventions done by the central government by setting up not only the wellness centers uh, which help in screening of the uh, of the um, of the patients but also in 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 setting up the jan aushadi kendras because largely 
uh, the patients have to spend large amounts of money and the burden on the on, on, on the people of India is largely when it comes to medicines. So the Jan Aushadi Kendras actually help in reduction of, uh, of expenditure to, to the patients and also the Ayushman Bharat which um, actually provides insurance coverage for 50 crore population in our country. So even as I speak about uh, our, uh, the Ayushman Bharat, I would definitely have to uh, talk about my state of Andhra Pradesh where there was a scheme that was run in the name of Arugya Shri and uh, the, the then Chief Minister Shri Jagan Mohan Reddy, uh, he applauded himself and said that he was uh, expanding the the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Ayushman Bharat by because Ayushman Bharat covered only about a thousand and odd uh, health uh, uh, initiatives, whereas his own scheme covered large more close to about two thousand plus. But in the whole uh, scheme of things, he not having paid the private hospitals who were actually shouldering the Ayushman Bharat and the Arugya Shri today have refused to come forward and support the Ayushman Bharat and the Arugya Shri. And this is negatively impacting the Ayushman Bharat scheme in our, in our own state. So I would request the Honorable Minister, even as she is seated here, to kindly take note of this and to ensure that uh, the, uh, the difficulties that our state is facing is overcome. Sir, having said that, the skilled workforce in our country is also a problem. Like for example, physicians. We have just about seven physicians for about 10,000 population in our country, whereas the requirement is, is largely more. So keeping that in mind, the intent to actually increase the number of colleges and to connect them to the government hospitals is very welcome. But however, sir, we need to keep in mind that even as we increase the number of colleges, the required number of teaching staff is also going to be an issue for us and in our uh, attempt or in, in, in all the good attempt, uh, intent that the central government has to improve the workforce, I think we need to keep in mind the quality also. Um, as, as I had mentioned, there is a shortage of teaching staff already uh, in the medical colleges and how do we fill this gap is going to be uh, um, um, uh, an area of concern for us. Sir, uh, I have been listening to my colleagues when they have been saying that very little has been uh, allocated for mental health. Sir, there has been an increase from 63 crores to 90 crores when it comes to mental health. I do agree, sir, given to the given into the fact that there is a lot of psychological pressure on our children when it comes to neutral, neutral families, the after effects of, uh, of COVID and also, if I may say, the drug addiction that we see in, in the country. I think this increase in allocation is welcome, though we desire that a lot more should be done in, in this um, direction. Sir, so Digital U-Win is, um, uh, uh, is a wonderful intervention, sir, where people largely who are migrating, we have a lot of migrant force, and when they are migrating, they do not have to carry their physical records, but they have it all stored in a digital portal, and wherever they go, for them to uh, access them would be very easy and the medical records are safe and this is uh, assuring uh, the entire country that it is also kept confidential. So the digital UN is really um, welcome. Sir, the increase of 4% for research is very, very important in our country today because uh, we see an increase of non-communicable uh, diseases. Uh, and even as I speak, we are also hearing of uh, new diseases that are coming in in the form of NIFA and so on and so forth. And therefore, we need to really uh, uh, come in, uh, in, increase our allocations for research to ensure that we are able and capable to, uh, to face such challenges that come up. Needless to say, the other interventions in the medical sector as well. And therefore, sir, the increase in um, allocation for... Um, uh, for uh, Research is uh, really welcome, sir. Sir, uh, having said that, uh, we, we need to also look at the interim budget, the provisions in the interim budget, even as we look at the provisions in the budget itself. Sir, in the interim budget, there has been a uh, uh, mention that uh, uh, Ayushman Bharat would today be ex extended to Anganwadi workers, ASHA workers, and uh, other workers at the Anganwadis, and also senior citizens who are 70 plus. 
sir today we have even as we talk of a demographic dividend we have longevity that has increased in our country and where we were talking about 62 65 years today we are talking about 72 to 75 years of longevity so keeping that in mind sir geriatrics has been a very very neglected uh, section when it comes to the health sector so keeping that in mind sir i think extending the ayushman bharat cards to 70 plus uh, senior citizens is rather very welcome and uh, would support them even in their uh, long, uh, 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 even at the older ages. Um, sir, I was also listening to many of my colleagues uh, who were uh, talking about uh, uh, about setting up of, of tertiary hospitals like AIMS where the uh, in number of aims have increased but uh, the uh, the the speed at which the construction should happen has not been happening sir but we need to also keep in mind that state governments uh, as their share would have to given the provide the infrastructure wherein largely when it comes to our own aims in mangalagiri in andhra pradesh there had been an inordinate delay in construction of aims because the state government would not remove the high tension wires from this site or remove the, uh, the, the electrical uh, uh, things that were existing there. So there was an in inordinate delay. Besides that, 10 crores of rupees was, was all that the, we were looking for from the state government to provide drinking water and water facility to Ames. But even that was denied for a long, long time, which, act, which actually delayed the construction of, of Ames. Therefore, state government, sir, would have to be very forthcoming when the central government is all willing to do, go out and do everything to uh, improve the, uh, the uh, health infrastructure in our country. I think even the state governments would have to come forward, sir. Sir, the, um, the, when, uh, as I was talking about the uh, digital mission, the ABDM, um, sir, which was launched in 2021 as part of Ayushman Bharat Digital Machine, uh, Mission, we need to keep in mind that the health records, sir, have been uh, today are 39.77 crores that have been linked with ABA cards. When you link them with ABA cards, sir, as I had spoken about UVIN, it makes it very, very easy for them when they travel with their ABA cards to, did, to, um, to um, access their records which are digitally uh, saved, sir. And, uh, sir, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Janav Shidi Kendra, sir, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, the Janav Shidri Kendras today, they, they provide medicines at a much cheaper rate, almost 50 to 90 percent cheaper than what they are available or lesser in rate uh, uh, as to what they are available in the, uh, in the markets. And uh, just recently, the, the 10,000 Jan Aushadi Kendra was actually uh, inaugurated, sir, at Ames in, in, in Devgarh last year. Sir, uh, even as I speak of Jan Aushadi Kendras… Can we conclude, madam? Yes, sir. Uh, even as I talk about Jan Aushadi Kendras, we also need to uh, keep in mind the fact that today India is called the pharmacy of the world. Um, and we not only are, uh, are producing our own medicines, but are, a, but are in a situation where we are able to supply to the entire world. But sir, I think uh, I would like to draw the attention of the minister to the fact that we need to invest in API manufacturing. We are solely dependent today on China, sir. And uh, uh, once we, uh, we are successful in manufacturing our own APIs, I think medicines would be much more available. Sir, coming to the last point, the cancer that many of us are, are quite, quite concerned about. Sir, Global Observatory had said that India stands third after uh, China and USA when it comes to the incidences of cancer in our country. Therefore, the, th the three uh, medications uh, which the uh, BCD or Basic Customs Duty has been read reduced on is a welcome measure which will actually make cancer uh, treatment available to people who are in deeply need of it and also the x-ray tubes and the flat screens the BCD being reduced on it would actually make uh, medical care and attention uh, easily accessible to people who actually need it sir. Sir, uh, I would I only like to conclude by saying that even as the central government provides 
for the healthcare in, in the country, it is up to the states to also come forward proactively and avail the support that the central government is coming. So even as the central government comes up with a health policy, uh, it would be ideal if state governments could come up with a, high, uh, with a health policy of their own, keeping their own issues of the state in mind so that they can come up with innovative uh, uh, interventions to ensure that health is made available and reachable to all. Thank you, sir.